Welcome to the I Am Classroom, presented by Illustrative Mathematics. Do you know what it looks like and sounds like to be in an I Am Classroom? Well, you're in the right place. You're about to step into several wondrous I Am Classrooms at Des Moines Public Schools and discover the I Am beliefs about teaching and learning in action. As you engage in this immersive experience, look for the hexagons, which are cues to guide you for specific interactions that illustrate these beliefs in the classroom. I am K-12 Math is designed to support an explicit, learnable, problem-based instructional model. In these classroom snapshots, students learn math by doing math as they take an active role both individually and in groups. The teacher has many roles in this framework. Listener, facilitator, questioner, synthesizer, and more. As you observe kindergarten, grade five, and algebra one classrooms, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Emily Baloma's Kindergarten Classroom. I am lesson, unit seven, lesson one, build shapes. We invite you to step into a kindergarten classroom to observe students engaging in activity one. Squares, squares, squares. Lesson learning goal. Count to answer how many questions about groups of up to 20 shapes and represent the quantity with a number. Debbie Hauser's 5th grade classroom. I am lesson, unit 7, lesson 6, hierarchy of quadrilaterals. We invite you to step into a 5th grade classroom to observe students synthesizing their learning about quadrilaterals in activity 1, shapes with toothpicks. Lesson learning goal. Classify parallelograms in a hierarchy based on angle measurements and side lengths. Explain why a square is also a rhombus. Okay, so the first one you made was a square. square. Does that square have two sets of parallelograms yeah, or yeah. parallel lines? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What was the next shape? What did you do to the square? Yeah, you shifted it a little bit. We made it a little slanted. Does it still have two sets of parallel lines? Yes. Hmm, so does that mean it's a parallelogram? Yes. Yeah. I hear yeses. Does yeah. anybody say no? No. So when we shift it to make it look like this, okay, we took our square and we made it like that. I see someone say, shaking their head no, that that's no longer a parallelogram. How do we prove that it's a parallelogram? Okay, so if I go like this, will those lines ever touch? No. Will they ever touch going this way? No. No, so is that a parallelogram? Yes. Okay, what about the rectangle? It's still a parallelogram. Why is it still a parallelogram? Because it's a parallelogram. And then when we just bent it or leaned it a little bit, it won't, it'll never cross. It still is never going to cross. So are all of them parallelograms? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so let's move on. Okay. Now, here's my next question. Which of the shapes that you built have four equal sides? The first set that you built or the second set? Which one of those had, had equal sides? So what does that, when I say four, no, be careful. Let's, I want to make sure you understand the definition. When I say equal, I want them to be the same length. So which of the shapes that you made had four sides that were all the same length? Turn and talk. Set one or set two? Anne Pham's Algebra 1 Classroom, IM Lesson, Unit 7, Lesson 3, Solving Quadratic Equations with Reasoning. We invite you to step into an Algebra 1 classroom to observe students using IM with the principles of building thinking classrooms in Activity 2, Finding Pairs of Solutions. Lesson Learning Goal Find the solutions to simple quadratic equations and justify, orally, the reasoning that leads to the solutions. Understand that a quadratic equation may have two solutions. The solutions to this equation are not opposites of each other. You with me? Okay, so when we 